Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. We are your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus. And Ushamut Zide Pinkavichin. We've been mastering secrets of organ playing for more than 20 years and sharing them on this blog since 2011. On this show, which we create from our home in Vilnius, Lithuania, we strive to help you grow in every area of organ playing, including practice, technique, repertoire, sight reading, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, harmony, and many others. Our hope is to help you become a complete musician, or what we call as total organist, a program which we have created to help you reach your dreams faster than you would do on your own. If you are new here, we invite you to subscribe to receive free updates of this blog at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video on how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini chords. And now let's go to the podcast for today. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Usha. Let's start episode 361 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by Lisa. And she writes, Why is it bad to double the bass line in the pedals? I don't notice much difference in the sound. I am a new organist, having played the piano for church for 30 years. That's a nice question, right, Osha? It is. And uh, we have talked about it a few times, but for people who come to the organ from piano background, it's not so apparent. True. And it's, you know, like... What, like a regular kitchen and dishes... Is comparing to let's say gourmet mm-hmm. dishes and gourmet kitchen. That's what is you know when you double pedal with your left hand and when you don't. You need to develop really a keen sense of of what you are playing and you know you really need to develop your ability to listen to mm-hmm. and to hear things. It comes with experience. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wrote to Lisa that if you double the pedals, you won't be able to develop left hand and pedal chord, you know, independence. That's oh. that's the main thing, and independence is needed when playing real organ music. But if organists who work at church don't have any uh, interest in playing real organ music, and they only su- uh, stick to hymns, then what we're talking about is not really understandable to them, right? It sounds well, it's, it, it, it really does. And there are organ pieces like that, where a pedal bass is uh, uh, doubling the left hand bass. Uh, for example, I'm right now playing Prier by Jose Noyales. And throughout this piece, I think, somehow he wrote this doubling in the pedals and in the left hand. Maybe because he didn't have in mind a big enough organ. Maybe, I don't know. But he had many instruments at hand. What was his view? But Maybe. Look, 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 if you have, let's say, a big organ, you are adding big registration. What happens when you double, you know, bass and left hand? But already each organ stop. If you pull out, you know, eight foot stop, it's eight foot stop, and then you put, let's say, four and two and blah, 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 and mixtures. How many already sounds you have for each single note? It's above all imaginable. In the pedals, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And in any, also on the manuals, because no, you n- rarely play with one stop pull, pulled out. Mm-hmm. It already doubles in itself, in that single voice. It already doubles itself and triples and quadruples. Oh, I see. So why do you need to do that unless, no, it was composer's 
Compos- composers know wish. But, but, I, but, but I don't but, understand but, why this wish was, uh, you know, Yalis composition. Mm, well, I don't care so much about it. Maybe he really didn't have a big pedal. Or maybe he wrote this piece for organists who couldn't really play pedals and left hand independently. That's more possible. Because In Lithuania. He, because he was, he worked for many years as, you know, organ teacher too. Mm-hmm. So maybe he noticed this problem as well. And that's why he wrote those wonderful organ trios. But anyway, when, you know, composer does that, he probably wants, you know, to give more gravity to the pedals and to the lower part of, you know, of the piece. But I don't think it's so much suited for him. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion. And do do whatever you want. You know, you are free few person. So for Lisa and Tupper, others who are wondering why we do not double the bass line uh, in the left hand, I, I'm, I was just reading this question one more time and she is asking backwards, why is it bad to double the bass line in the pedals? In the pedals is good. But in the left hand is not good. Yes, that's mm-hmm. what happens usually. Yeah. Because when you have a hymn, it's four voices most often, yes. Mm-hmm. And what people do that we play all four voices on the manuals and then put, you know, the, the lowest voice on the pedal board. Mm-hmm. And what we are meaning is that you need to play three voices on the manuals, so soprano, alto, tenor, and then to play the bottom line with your pedal mm-hmm. I think um, <laughs> uh, I think um, Lisa needs to try this technique right if it's rather new to her and uh, rather in- uncomfortable probably at the beginning and she will struggle with those hymns and that's okay it will just mean if she is up to it up to the challenge. It is a challenge for beginners. It's just too bad that I did not understand her question right from the beginning. I understood the question, but she is writing it backwards, you know. Okay. Like, uh, like it is in her mind, probably it's normal to play the bass line in the left hand. And then why do we need to double the bass line in the pedals? We need to play the bass line with the pedals uh-huh. and not with your left hand. Exactly. If you play without any pedals, then obviously play the bass line with the left hand. Uh, but that's the point. If you always play without pedals, you will never learn to play the pedals. And then um, it will be hard to to call yourself a real organist. True, then better stick with the piano <laughs> if you don't want to play pedals. Uh, Charles Tournemir uh, once wrote that organists who cannot improvise are just half organist. So what would he call people who play organ without pedals? One third organist or, or what? One fourth. <laughs> one, one fourth probably. <laughs> That's not. We're not making fun of Lisa or anyone else, of course. Uh, we're just suggesting to try out this technique, and and not to play as it's written right away, but just play it and treat it as a real organ piece. It's very small, maybe one page long, one minute long, right? And you first master it, probably voice by voice and then two voice combinations then three part combinations and only then tackle four part texture for Lisa if she has played piano for church uh, for 30 years maybe she doesn't need to play uh, separate voices at first maybe she can do two voices but definitely she needs pedal line separately sure and why pedal the bass line on the pedal board sounds better than on the manual? That's because you have more 16 foot stops on the pedal and it gives gravity and mm-hmm. it's very nice for him accompanying and congregational singing. 
Yeah, it's like having double basses in orchestra. You will not have that effect if you will only use manuals. And even if you will put the 16 foot on the manuals, but will not use the pedal, the effect will be not as nice. I haven't thought about that for many times, but now it's very obvious. If you omit double basses from the orchestra, it's not just the 16 foot is missing, it's entire foundation is missing. That's right. I the same is for organ too. I don't think you will be able to listen to the violin for so much, for such a long time without double bass. Exactly. Well, it, it, people need to try those challenging things, right? That's why we are learning. That's, that's why we are trying to get better at things we couldn't do yesterday. Right? There wouldn't be a point of practicing and spending hours on the organ bench if if all we ever wanted to do was to play the hymns in a way that we always play. You know? That's right. Even playing the hymns are, are may, maybe 10 different or 20 or 30 different ways. And that's another challenge in itself. But that's the theme for another podcast. Thank you guys for listening. This was fun, and please keep sending your wonderful questions. And uh, we hope to help you grow. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. This blog is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online, where you will find courses for every area of organ playing, including technique, practice, sight reading, repertoire playing, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory and harmony, with hundreds of scores and thousands of exercises. Here is what some of the students are saying. Hugh writes, the sight reading course has helped me tremendously. Thank you very much for your essays, courses and all your help. Robert writes, I found the fingerings, registration ideas and general comments to be excellent. John writes, I have found your download very helpful. It was really excellent. I have watched some of your teaching videos and when I read your instructions. I try to imagine you are there teaching me. You may feel disappointed that I am two three days behind, but I am a slow learner and I have committed to taking the time to get it right, as you say. But the other night my wife commented that she had never heard me play such a detailed melody in the left hand so well. My left hand is generally poor. Robert writes, It has been a great pleasure in my life of having discovered your courses and material as well as the YouTube work of recordings. You have a calm and pleasant way of teaching. Ron writes, Hi with the Santosha. Thank you guys. What a wonderful response to my email note to you. You've got me right, and I feel you understand my level of playing. Yes, at home and lucky that I have an organ for that reason. I am paying attention to this, and I am going to try this haha no longer secret model. Yes, and I love Caesar Frank too. What is very nice about your blog podcast is that Osha and Vidas are like a Socratic dialogue, and by bouncing things off of each other, so much more information comes out and is expressed. Your comments contain a wealth of information and understanding. I really appreciate this. It is very inspiring and will keep us moving forward. Would you like to receive the same or even better results that our students are getting? If so, join them at organduo.lt slash total dash organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to receive free updates of this blog, make sure you do that at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video how to master any organ composition and 10 day organ playing mini course. This was Vidas and Osha from Secrets of Organ Playing. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen.